hello again. This is Jonathan Miller with the Hometown Historian Channel. We're doing another haunted history video. Uh, we're actually out here north of uh, Fredericksburg, and I will show you in the background there. That is the Lick Memorial. We're here at Cedar Hill Cemetery. Over there is the uh, uh, memorial for Civil War soldiers that John Lick put up, and back there is the van and also make sure I'm getting it in there I'm not sure if I am or not the uh, that's John Lick's mausoleum so but we're here for a very specific reason uh, in Fredericksburg here in Lebanon County as well there have been haunted tales of a headless horseman it's sort of a thing that a lot of communities have because it's something that could be commonplace a drunken horseman gets his head taken off or something of that nature and then you have a headless horseman uh, there's actually a tale of Lebanon in the whole Lebanon Valley that there's a headless horseman that sort of roams the entire valley not really much beyond it being sort of a generalized story uh, the one here in Fredericksburg is a little different there's actually a couple variances one there was a I guess it was like a cabinet maker coffin maker and uh, might have even been an apprentice of an undertaker and he was riding his horse and he was sort of a pretty nasty guy and wound up decapitating himself and supposedly uh, there's a headless horseman that goes around the fields here of Fredericksburg Pennsylvania and just sort of the surrounding communities and rides around there's also some tales of these glimmering lights that you'll see from time to time and also there are these women that sort of wring their hands they're wearing like a bonnet type thing on their head in these old style dresses going through the fields wringing their hands and looking to be mourning uh, there's also another version of the headless horse horseman tale which is there was this guy that was sort of had flaunted the law and was trying to get out of justice so he was riding down the road pretty fast and didn't was looking behind him did not see the tree this large oak that was in the middle of the road the horse veered at the last second but I guess the guy sort of slightly veered to the side clapped his head right off the tree and basically they say in this headless horseman tale he's doomed to ride down this road over and over again and repeat his mistake and that's his punishment for flaunting the law is that he constantly smashes into this oak tree over and over again through all eternity once again how many of these tales are actually true or not who knows uh, but I wanted to also talk about a couple other tales that are in the area. It's actually the one is over in like Jackson Township, which is out near Myerstown where I lived. And it's probably closer, sounds like closer to Mount Zion, which is a small town. It's sort of maybe a <coughs> three or four miles away from Myerstown. Uh, there is, uh, thieves are never looked upon well. But one of the things that was looked upon the worst of anything were property thieves. What people would do is they'd take the property stones that were on the boundaries, especially in farmland, and they'd move them to, in essence, steal land. And they said there was one guy that did this in Jackson Township out near Mount Zion. And uh, he was doomed then through all eternity. His punishment was to carry around a rock and looking for a place to put it. And that was his punishment. And they said that you could see this guy, and all you could hear him is where to place it, where to place it, where to put the stone, where to put the stone. So the story goes how this guy got released from it is this guy went to this, this tavern in Mount Zion, and this is back, I guess, in the 1800s, and he got quite inebriated. So once again, how much of this story is actually true or not? But he said he ran into the ghost of this guy. And the ghost was just saying, where to put it, where to put it. It was sort of like uh, almost from uh, Charles Dickens' uh, The Christmas Tale where you had the, the uh, one partner was carrying around his ball and chain and he was just sort of constantly tormented. And this guy ran into the property thief and he would say, where to put it? He's like, sheesh, man. He's like, just put it back where you got it. So the guy did it, and poof, he was gone. Curse was broken. So, sort of funny. Uh, another one of the tales from around here, the legends that I thought was sort of neat, is they do have a couple of different Native American legends. Well, there's one out near the Swatera, and I forget what they call it, but it's something about an outlook 
of the Swatera, and there was this Indian, uh, Native American, who had stolen quite a bit of treasure, and he had hidden it somewhere along the Swatera Valley there near the creek. And this guy, this old farmer, said he used to see this spirit sort of looking over this precipitous drop and looking over where, I guess, where he kept his treasure. And this guy looked for the treasure for years and years and never found it. But supposedly somewhere out there along the Swatera Creek is a, a treasure of great value that a Native American uh, had found. And, and unfortunately for him, never got to have any use for it because he died well before then. So whether it was a a bad end or whatever happened he never got to spend his treasure so that's why they say don't lay your treasures down here on earth because not gonna last you're not gonna take it with you but uh, these are a couple of the stories out here in Fredericksburg uh, whether this headless horseman exists or not whether he goes out in the fields and rides around uh, whether it's the guy that running into the tree over and over again is pretty pretty bad way to to spend all eternity as you constantly repeat your death but uh I guess that's what happens when you do naughty things. So, uh, all these different tales, these legends and myths and lore, they all have have a place in, in history to some degree. It, it's it's unique with the the one version of the Eternal Hunter where they had the Jacob Brewster in Lancaster County, where there's actually a name attributed to the figure from myth, but uh, no names are, are given to these characters or just uh, figures from folklore. And that's probably a lot of this is. A lot of these are German tales, European tales that made their way over here. Because uh, a lot of the immigrants that were here in this area in the Lebanon Valley were German immigrants. So a lot of that folklore came along with them and it was part of their storytelling overnight. And maybe somebody had a bad ending like that and it turned into, turned into legend over time. Who really knows how these stories get started? But it is cool to share them, uh, these fireside uh, spooky stories. It's a lot of fun. And it's another uh, video for the haunted history. Uh, hoping to do one more today yet. Uh, it's a pretty day here on a Sunday. And then uh, Cliff and I are getting together over at my sister's, a few friends, and uh, they're celebrating our birthdays coming up. Cliff's just happened, I believe, on November 4th, which was Thursday. Mine's coming up on the 19th. Uh, another year older, another year grumpier, another, another year more handsome and debonair. <laughs> I really, I really do have to say I enjoy doing these haunted tales. I've gotten a bunch of them from a book that I got from the uh, Lebanon uh, County Historical Society on haunts. There's a couple more in there I want to tell. One's pretty gruesome and horrible, uh, but it is a story worth telling. I've gotten a bunch off of uh, that. PA normal is paranormal but PA for Pennsylvania uh, site I put the blog up I think on the one video uh, it's pretty cool stories and like I said some of them some of them have some kind of piece in history maybe a little bit of fact in there but most of it's just riddles and nonsense and a lot of fun so just wanted to share this with you and uh, hope to see you on the next video thanks everybody we'll see you all about town